Hi, my name is Alicia Sakran. I'm a sophomore and my major is occupational therapy. I decided to go to the Albright Knox Art Gallery in Buffalo, which featured a lot of artists that we studied in class, along with a lot of other pieces from this era. The piece I chose is called George Went Swimming at Barnes Hole, But It Got Too Cold by Joan Mitchell in 1957. She was an American artist and lived from 1925 to 1992. She was the type of artist that hated labels that were concerned with beauty and believed that there was no one way to paint, and also strongly agreed with Harry Holtzman that said, the hardening of the categories causes art disease. When I first saw this painting, it reminded me of Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm Number no. 30 that we studied in class. When you initially look at it, the brush strokes looks random and it looks like there's no meaning to the painting. I also noticed that the overall tone seemed kind of sad and earthy because of the reddish brown tones, the blues, grays, olive greens, and also some black. I also realized that there was white paint on big portions of the canvas, which counteracted the darkness of the other colors around it, and also brought some lightness to it as well. Also towards the top, you can see a little bit of yellow peeking through the large portion of colors in the middle, and also some towards the top of the painting as well. The painting also had a lot of texture. There were a lot of spots on the canvas that had a lot of thick layers of paint and they were really noticeable even from far away. After doing a little research, I confirmed that it was abstract expressionism, which was characterized by painting the subjective emotional expression with particular emphasis on the creative spontaneous act, like action painting. Jackson Pollock was one of the most famous abstract expressionist artists and did a lot of action painting that focused on his inner emotions. Along with Willem de Kooning, who was slightly more representational than Pollock, but was still considered abstract. As well as Mark Rothko, who did a lot of color field paintings. Mitchell graduated from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 1947, and ended up traveling to France for a year in 1948-49, which is where her paintings started to move towards abstraction. She eventually returned to New York and continued her art there. Since the tragic World War II just ended, this was a time of turmoil and confusion in the United States, which is, would explain why these artists were trying to express something in the form of art. And also an emergence of a new way of life in the 1950s with suburbanization and the American dream. The brushstrokes and colors are not completely random. She put some time and planning into the executing where every stroke and color went, which was typical of many of the artists in this era. They wanted you to think about it rather than just understand it at first. The description at the gallery gave some background information as well. For example, George is not referring to a person, but her beloved poodle, who enjoyed to swim. Although it may be hard to tell, Mitchell actually started off the painting with numerous shades of yellow, which was depicting a sunny afternoon with her dog in East Hampton, Long Island. But she spent some time away from it and came back with a different feel. She began to add some blues and whites that created a cooler tone to the painting, especially against the yellow tones, which could be interpreted as the seasons changing to winter. The patches of grays and blues in the top right corner could possibly be representing a winter sky, which would relate to the but it got too cold part of the title. Also, the prominent blue and purpley tones on the bottom could be representation of water. Going along with the winter season theme, I see the white as snow falling or ice ascending from the bottom. Not long after, there was a hurricane in 1954 in East Hampton, and her dog George was with her the whole time through the storm and unfortunately he died later that year. To me, this can maybe explain why the yellow colors got covered up that she initially put down. She was upset about her dog passing away and didn't really match with the yellow tones of happiness and therefore changed it to more cooler tones to match what she was feeling. After processing all this information, it made me really think about the title and that it's actually referring to the course that the painting took when she was in the process of it, rather than the actual change of temperature on the specific day she started it. This relates to abstract expressionism because although it at first seems to be extremely unplanned and erratic, it actually portrays her personal expression and inner emotions and feelings. It represents her progression of feelings as time passes and she continues to work on it. Also, since the first impression viewers usually probably get is the unsystematic look to it, to truly understand it, the viewer is forced to imagine the painter at work and think about their thought process of their work, rather than just looking at a piece of art and understanding it right away. There were a lot of artists and a lot of concepts 
that I saw in this art gallery that we went over class and it was really cool to be able to see this and experience this. This is my first time being to an art gallery. I would definitely go again. I really enjoyed it and it was really cool to be able to apply what we learned in class and use that to interpret the other pieces of art I saw. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation and thank you for watching.